Okay, next is the special techniques of technical writing. Hindi siya gumagalaw, no? <laughs> so, this unit focuses on the special techniques of technical writing. This are techniques that could be used by the writer to improve his writings. An effective writer does not settle on mediocre reports, but he goes beyond to clearly convey his ideas. Hindi pwede, ang pwede na. Isa yan sa mga moto ko sa buhay. Hindi pwede ang pwede na. Uh, dahil kung kaya mo pa namang higitan, yung pwede na, mas maganda. Para mas nag -e excel ka. Okay. So, eto. Uh, these are the special techniques of technical writing. Definition, classification, partition, description of a process, and description of a mechanism. In definition... When a writer uses ordinary and unfamiliar technical terms in a report, he may utilize the definition technique. Definition is giving the meaning to a particular word or term. Uh, there are two kinds of definition, informal and formal definition. So when you write, pag gumagawa ka ng report, for example, uh, one of the best subjects in the BS Criminology Program is dactyloscopy, period. Tapos, dactyloscopy is, tapos yung definition niya. Pwede yung gawing technique para mas maging maganda, pakinggan yung report mo. So, dito muna tayo sa informal definition. Um, the meaning of the term is made up of one or two synonyms substituted for an unfamiliar word. This is mostly composed of short substituted words and phrases. For example, detention. Uh, the confinement or restraint upon persons, torture, inflicting pain to the body or mind. Okay? Binigyan mo lang siya ng synonym. Yun yung informal definition. But kapag formal definition naman, hindi siyempre nga, formal nga siya eh. This type of definition is made up of complete and longer sentences. This is used in a more formal written output. This is categorized in three parts. Three main parts, namely species, uh, genus, and differentia. Species is the term to be defined. Genus or class is the group or class to which the term belongs. And then differentia, specific features that identifies or separates the term from other members of the class. For example, Dale, uh, yung genus niya is the security and differentia given for the temporary release of a person in custody of the law. Kumbaga, again, uh, itong genus is a common, uh, hindi, is a group, it's part of a group. Yun nga, ito, security daw to. Yung firearm naman is an instrument. Yun yung genus niya. Tapos, para saan yung instrument? Anong pakinabang nitong firearm? Dito na siya, papasok sa diferensya. Specific na siya. Ganyan ang formal definition. Balikan natin. Pag informal, dalawang synonym lang. Kapag formal definition, may ganito. Uh, may genus or class pa and then diferensya. So, ways of expanding a formal definition. Formal definition can be amplified or expanded using the following method. O, diba? Ang dami pa. Etymology, yung pinagmulan niya nung word na yon. Details, examples, comparison, and contrast. Cause and effect, description, and negation. So, when we say etymology, this method is the citing, the origin of the word. Uh, criminologia came from the word crimen and logia. Crimen, which means ganito. Lohia, which means ganito. Yun yung etymology. This is used mainly for the purpose of illustration for further clarification on the meaning of a particular term. For example, the term camera is derived from camera obscura, which is the Latin term for dark room or dark chamber. In 1700, the camera obscura was designed by Leonardo da Vinci with accurate scale and perspective. Ayun. Ang... Um, tinutukoy talaga, ang main topic dito sa, sa mga sentence na to ay camera obscura. Pero sinumulan niya 
sinimulan yung sentence dito sa camera para mas maintindihan ito. Okay. Next is details. Dito pa rin sa ways of expanding a formal definition. This is a method of adding a particular or minute account or adding supporting details to a term. This is mainly for the purpose of clarifying the word. So gunpowder, for example, gunpowder refers to the powder charge used in firearms, also referred to as propellant. Diba? May iba pang term na dinagdag. The most common type is the black powder, which is made up of potassium nitrate, charcoal, and sulfur. Smokeless powders are those given to nitro powders, which are entirely smokeless in action. Ayun pa, oh. Yun nga, mayroong particular or minute account or supporting details, katulad nga, no? also referred to as propellant. Tapos may iba ka pang tinalak. Yung common type daw niya, tapos mayroon pa palang smokeless powder, etc. And then, another way to expand the formal definition is by examples. This method is used in order to give vivid definition to terms that are abstract by citing concrete illustrations or additional examples. There, For example, there are several marks which may be found on fired cartridge cases, namely... O yan, may example siya. Firing pin impression, bridge pin, pin impression, chamber marks, extractor marks, shearing marks, pivotal marks, ejector marks, and magazine lips marking. Yun na nga, magbibigay ka ng concrete illustration or additional examples. And then another way of expanding formal definition is by comparison and contrast. This is a method that makes use of citing similarities kung kino-compare mo siya and difference kung contrast so between two objects so example between 25 and 35% of the patterns encountered consists of whorls familiar na siguro kay dito no whorls in a whorl some of the ridges make a turn through at least one circuit a double loop whorl consists of two separate and distinct loop formations with two separate and distinct shoulders and two delta deltas Accidental world, on the other hand, yun naman, uh, contrast naman, on the other hand, consists of two different types of patterns with the exception of plain arch with two or more deltas. Okay? And we also have cause and effect. This is a method that points out that something is done that triggered it. Yung cause. Therefore, it brought about the result. Yung nga, nagkaroon ng effect. The amount of blood loss in the body without being replaced may probably imply that the cause of death in a person is hemorrhage. Balikan natin. The amount of blood loss in the body without being replaced may probably imply that the cause of death in a person is hemorrhage. Yun na yun. Cause, of, cause and effect. The loss of red stinge in blood may also imply that carbon monoxide poisoning or other blood diseases is the cause of the death of a person. So, yun na. Pinakita kung ano yung dahilan kung bakit namatay. Uh, sinabi pa dito, kapag medyo hindi na raw mamula-mula yung kulay ng dugo, posible daw na ang ang cause nun, ito kasi yung resulta, yung loss of red tinge and blood. At ang dahilan nun is carbon monoxide poisoning or other blood diseases. Then we also have description. This is a method of describing or illustrating a term's physical attributes and appearance. This method uses adjectives in describing. Uh, alam niyo naman siguro ang adjective na pag-usapan na natin yan uh, sa mga nakaraang lesson. For example, somatic death or clinical death is a complete, continuous, persistent cessation of respiration and circulation of almost all brain functions of an organism. The immediate signs of death in a person are the sudden cessation, wrong spelling, pa, sudden, double D, <laughs> sudden cessation of upward and downward movement of the chest in the process of respiration. Inexplain niya pa kung ano ba yung immediate signs of death in a person. Di ba? Um, sudden pale color of the face and lips, the pulse and the heartbeat stops, the jaw or the head drops down, and the flaccidity of the muscles occur. So, yun yung mga description niya. 
Then we also have negation. This method uses negative statements to emphasize the meaning of a particular word. For example, a color negative film is printed on a color photographic paper which is essentially similar to the films used in camera except that the emulsion layer is coated in a paper base and couplers are colorless. Yun yun, may negation kasi may exempt na term. Okay. 